So to accompany my butter chicken or any other curry you're making, butter chicken, paneer masala, anything like quite creamy gravy, I prefer to have a naan or a rotli with it. I'm going to show you naan first of all today. And all I've got in here is self-raising flour and it's got the brilliant ability to rise itself so you don't need to put baking powder or anything. Any self-raising flour like this, I've put in there two cupfuls. So these are American cups. I was giving these amazing things. I've been using cups and being a bit American, which is actually a little bit um, sort of disloyal, isn't it? I shouldn't, I should be British. But anyway, I've got these cups. Because I don't measure, I'll just whack it in. But anyway, two cups of these and two, two cups of self-raising flour, I'm putting in one cup of yogurt. This is natural yogurt, or whatever you have will do. Natural yogurt has a little bit of a sort of sourness with it, which will really help with your naan. But if you don't have a Greek yogurt or anything, I mean, don't use your sort of strawberry yogurt or anything, but you know, just your normal Greek yogurt, natural, not natural yogurt would be better, but if you don't, Greek yogurt's fine. Put that in there with a pinch of salt. I'm keeping this recipe really, really simple. Let me do a pinch of salt. There are loads of other things that people do put in here. You can put coriander, you can put some seeds in there, all this kind of other stuff, but I want to keep it really simple for you. So that way you will attempt it because I've got this reputation now for being simple. So mix it together and look, I'm going to bind it. The whole self-raising flour, I'm going to bind with the yogurt. That's where I'm going to get that real softness and it's going to rise and that's what gives me the non texture. Otherwise it would just be like bread. That's where you get that sort of tanginess from, from the yogurt. So once initially it's all binded like that, I hope you can see this. I do have a bit more in here, so let me just get this all in. Yeah, love to use my fingers because I am going to go in now with my hands. The best way to do a dough is with your hands. Get rid of that. And go in and really start bringing that whole dough together. The beauty about a naan is you don't need to make it perfectly round like you do a chapati. It can be any old shape because it will look really pretty because of the way that it fluffs up and everything. So it's absolutely fine. Don't worry about having to roll it up fresh. So I'll get a piece of my dough. Yeah like that, whatever size it is, it's fine. And then just have an extra bit of flour as well, just to dip in and out of it so it moves around. So I always keep a little tin of flour on the side and I'm gonna put it in there. There we go. And then the thing is this will spring back quite a lot. So you might find initially that, wow, it's not even going into a proper non shape. As you start doing this, it will eventually keep its shape, but it's not like a chapati dough. So sometimes I find even doing it with your fingers is absolutely fine. You can just stretch it out like a pizza dough as well. So don't be afraid to use different techniques. There's no strict rule about none. Because when you get it in a restaurant as well, it's never like completely round, is it? It's always different shapes. But I'll just use this to make it a little bit easier. And these are just like, I like to make little mini nuns. I don't like, there's no, I don't have a pan big enough for a tandoor, so I'm just going to make like little mini naans like this. And on a dry frying pan like this, there's my one naan. It doesn't have any particular shape, but I'll whack that on there and hope for the best. <laughs> if it was sitting there for a little while, it'd be a bit better, but that's what it needs. No oil, just dry fry it on each side. And the rule is three, one side, two sides, three sides. You don't need to go back and forth even more than that because you're going to mess with the whole gluten and how it's going to rise. So while that's cooking, never waste time. Do another one while that's, while that's uh, doing its thing. So I'll just roll it out again. Go, I've got some charring on there. I'm going to press it. And look, it's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling. We've got naan. And that is a button. If you did have the garlic butter that I spoke about, it would be so much nicer. Let me just put a little bit of butter on there. There you go. That's like homemade naan.